In example two, we're going to solve by factoring. So example one gave us a feel of what we're going to do after we factor it, but now we're going to get to the problems that you'll see on the test, where you're actually going to have to factor them yourself. And that's going to go back with the notes that we were doing before. So if we take a look at letter A, we have 5x squared plus 30x equal to zero. And what we have to do is we have to factor that left-hand side. So let's go through our, our rules of factoring. So the first thing is to look for a greatest common factor. And here I do have a greatest common factor. I can take out a 5 from both of these, and I can take out an x. So I'm going to factor out a 5x. And if I divide, what I'm left with, 5x squared divided by 5x leaves me with just 1x. And then 30x divided by 5x leaves me with 6 equal to 0. Once I factored it, now I can do what I did in the first example. So at this point, I would take the 5x plus, or the 5x and the x plus 6 and set them both equal to 0. So I'm going to take 5x and set that equal to 0, or x plus 6 and set that equal to 0. If I solve the first one, I would start by dividing both sides by 5 and I get x is equal to 0. Oops. Or, in my second one, I would just subtract 6 from both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 6. Now, on your test, you are going to be graded on can you factor, so can you set it up this way, and then can you give me the correct answers. Let's go ahead and take a look at letter B. So letter B, we have x squared minus 36 equal to 0. We should recognize that there's a subtraction sign in between two things, and these are both perfect squares. So here is a difference of squares. So we can factor this as x minus 6 times x plus 6. And again, that's set equal to 0. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and solve. So we can take x minus 6 and set that equal to 0, or x plus 6, oops, and set that equal to 0. And then if we solve, first I would add 6 to both sides, and I get x is equal to 6. In the second one, I would subtract 6 from both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 6. And again, you should be able to show this and this as your final answer. Then if I take a look at letter C, I have x squared minus 5x equal to 24. And remember, we are using the zero product property, or you can just think we're solving quadratics. In order to do that, we have to have our equation set equal to zero. So to do that, we want to start by subtracting that 24 from both sides and get x squared minus 5x minus 24 equal to zero. You need to have that zero in order to solve. Now what we want to do is we want to factor this. So we're going to set this up. And this is factoring our trinomial. So this is using that guess and check method. I know my first term is just x squared, and that's going to come from x times x. And then I have my negative 24 here, so I'm going to list down all the possibilities that I have for negative 24. So I could multiply 1 and negative 24. I could do negative 1 and positive 24. I could do 2 and negative 12. I could do negative 2 and positive 12. I could do 3 and negative 8. I could do negative 3 and positive 8. I could do 4 and negative 6, or negative 4, and positive 6. So a lot of different possibilities here. And remember, when I multiply, these two numbers and these two numbers need to add up to give me negative 24. Since my coefficient here is just 1, I'm looking for numbers when I multiply, since 1 times something and 1 times something else, I just need two numbers that are going to add to negative 5. So as I look through here, I have 3 and negative 8, or negative 3 and 8, which would give me 5, or negative 5, and it turns out that the positive 3 and the negative 8 will do it. So I have plus 3 and minus 8. 
and you always want to check your factors to make sure that they do work. So you could foil this all out <clears throat> to make sure that you get this to start with. And then once you have your factors, now we can go ahead and set them equal to zero. So we're going to take x plus 3 and set that equal to zero. Or we could take x minus 8 and set that equal to zero. So here we would subtract 3 from both sides and we would get x equal to negative 3. And in this one we would add 8 to both sides and we get x equal to 8. Next I would like you to do a, top, a couple on your own. So go ahead and look at the try this. The factoring part is probably going to be the more difficult part of this. So take your time in factoring. If you need help, let me know and I'll come around and, and try to steer you in the right direction. But again, it is going to be a guess and check in terms of that factoring. So go ahead and pause it now. Unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. If you did number one correctly, you should have factored it into 3x plus 1 times x plus 11 and have that set equal to 0. And then when you solved it, you should have gotten x to equal negative 1 third or x to equal negative 11. And if you did number 2 correctly, you should have factored it into x plus 2 times x minus 5 equal to 0. And if you solved it, you would have gotten x equal to negative 2 or x equal to 5. Let me know if you have any questions.